With interest rates on the rise and therefore our costs as investors and homeowners potentially increasing slightly over the next year or two, I wanted to record a quick video with five super simple tips that you or your family can use to save some money, to feel more confident as we go through this small adjustment and get yourself in the safest and best possible position. Now the first tip or idea is to go and talk to your bank manager or your mortgage broker. Now, I can say that sometimes I forget to implement some of these myself, but about two months ago, I went and spoke to my broker, Derry, and said, mate, I've got a few loans with one bank at the moment, can you help me out? He went to the bank and said he couldn't, but he recommended I give them a call. So after calling them, I took my rates from around about that 2.8 to 2.9% mark, all the way through one phone call which lasted about 40 minutes to the 2.4%. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but that small reduction across my total debt is gonna save me more than $8,000 this financial year alone. The second thing I sat down and did with my wife about three or four years ago was to really budget for the first time since I was about 24, 25 now. What I did is I pulled up a spreadsheet and looked at two different columns. One had all of the variable costs in my life, which is my lifestyle, you know, going out for lunches, spending time with friends, all that fun stuff, traveling. And the other one was my fixed costs. Now for me, what I really wanted to do was look at that fixed cost component. At that time, the fixed costs in my life were about $120,000 per year. So I needed a couple of thousand dollars a week to, to live. And that was to put my kids in school, in daycare, to pay for the phones, electricity, the debt on our properties, um, our cars, petrol, all of that sort of stuff. Now, what I started to do one by one was just look at, for example, starting with phones. Now, I have a work phone, a personal phone, and my wife's phone, and then we've got work internet and homework internet. Now, across those different line items, I realized we we're paying about 500 bucks per month. So what I did is instead of keeping them all with one provider, I went to for example, from Telstra to Audi Mobile, which is actually on the Telstra network. And for those phones that were 100 bucks each a month, I was able to bring them down to between 15 and $35 each per month. We then went from Telstra for our home internet to a different Australian provider and was able to save 50% on that one line item alone. We then went and looked at our food, for example, which for me as someone who loves health and loves eating well is a major expense of 300 to 400 bucks a week for our family. And what we started to do was go to the local markets or the local um, places where all the fruit and veggies were, like Urbacker's Farm up here, as well as instead of going to Coles and Woolies, back to Audi and just getting those staples, get some of the high quality organic and free range style meats that were available there. Now, again, doesn't sound super sexy, but our budgets come down from 400 a week to about 320 a week, which is a significant percentage saving as well. You'd be shocked at when you start to look at all of these fixed items in your life, and that might be insurances on your own home, your investments or your rental property, insurances on your cars, the subscriptions that you've got that might have stacked up over time, gym memberships, where you're buying food, um, water companies, and all of those sorts of things. Like what I've found is that every one of these light items has an opportunity to save money with the equal quality. And I was able to take that fixed cost in my life from 120 grand a year to about $75,000 a year, which is absolutely massive. And then that money that I was spending on those costs that I no longer need to can go into paying off debt on my own home, investment properties, on holidays, on not working as much and taking a little bit of time off each week to spend with my family. And most importantly, to just take that pressure off. The third idea that I've been doing literally since my first paycheck when I finished university is paying myself first. Now, I remember my very first gig after I finished uni was with a local solar company on the coast and I was earning, I think, around about $60,000 a year, which I thought was incredible. I then left that provider, went to IBM and was back on 45 grand a year in my graduate program the year after, but the learning was worth it but I paid myself first from that first day. Now, at that time, I was able to put about 500 bucks a week away because I didn't have any kids or many expenses in my life. And as my income's gone up and down over the years, I've always committed to paying myself first. Now, 
as we go through a period of interest rate adjustments or the cost of petrol and food being a bit higher with some inflation, we can often forget to look after our longer term financial position and paying yourself first is the simplest way, whether it's a hundred bucks a week or five grand a week that we can set ourselves up for long-term financial security. The fourth simple idea that again, I didn't look at until literally a few months ago is increasing rents. Now, as we've gone through this period of inflation and high demand for rentals in Australia and the construction industry, even though prices have boomed, actually the stock being delivered to market has massively reduced in the last three years is rent returns. Now, almost in every suburb in Australia in 2000, and 21, rents went up by nearly 100 bucks a week. And according to CoreLogic and Simon Priestley, they're expected to go up another 100, maybe even 200 a week in Australia by the end of 2023. Now, I simply jumped on realestate.com, looked at all of my investment properties in terms of the suburb and what's renting, and then sent my property manager one email saying, you know, hey, um, notice my rents are a little bit low. This is where I see market value. What do you think? She responded and then we agreed. Now, that one email has now increased my rents by over 650 bucks a week, over $30,000 in the next year. Absolutely, if you haven't done so, start looking at what adjustments you could make. The fifth idea is for all of you investors out there is to reduce your property related expenses. Now, there's two very simple ways you can do this. One is through looking at your insurances, the other one is through looking at your management or your maintenance related costs. Now, on the insurance side of things, I've now got an insurance broker that I work with. Each year, he basically looks at maybe 15 different um, insurance companies for me, finds the best prices and terms that I'm comfortable with. What I've personally done with him is worked on making sure the valuation on my property is correct in terms of how much it'll cost to replace, the contents are correct working with him, I've also looked at differences between contributing $500 excess all the way up to a couple of thousand in excess. I've looked at paying up front versus paying monthly. And through simple little tips and tricks that I've learned and that he's given me, I've been able to pull my insurances down on all of my properties by almost 40%. Now, I highly recommend you either shop around online or work with an insurance broker on this sort of stuff, there is massive money to be saved. The second one is in management. Now, if you've only got one property being managed by one property manager, it can be a little bit more difficult without some volume to negotiate a better rate. But if you're sitting in Sydney on Melbourne at 10% or 8%, maybe try and pull it down one or 2% in the next 12 months, particularly as rents have gone up because the profitability for managers has also gone up as the rents have jumped. If you've got multiple properties and you're sitting at 10 or 8%, maybe you know give your property manager a quick email and see if there's something they can do. Now, most of the time they're just gonna say no, and if they're a great business, just because they say no, doesn't mean that you don't wanna stay with them, but there might be an opportunity to pull some of the costs down in this current market as well. Just wanna say thank you for sitting through my video today. I hope you've got some ideas and some tips and tricks. As we move through this period, we wish you, as always, all the safety and please invest with confidence. Woo! That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Getting Have a cool, swim. Bro. Yeah. Oh, sweaty. So sweaty. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's so nice, eh? Oh.